What's up everybody, Kevin Barnett back in the Carbide 3D studio. Every week we have people buying machines, Nomads, Shapeocos, and those folks are brand new to CNC. If you're one of those people, this is for you. We know the questions. How do I learn Carbide Create? How do I start my very first project? We have someone for you right now. Alex Corville is gonna take you through a step-by-step -step tutorial and get you going on your first project, get your skills headed in the right direction. Part one is all about design. Part two is about the tool path they needed to create your first object. Hope you're ready to level up. Here's Alex. Hi everyone, this is Alex Corville with Carbide 3D. Today, we are going to go through a two-part tutorial to get you started with Carbide Create, our in-house CAD computer-aided design, and CAM computer-aided manufacturing software that is available for everyone to use and learn for free and included with every Carbide 3D machine. In part one of this tutorial, you'll focus on the design of your project. And in part two, you'll focus on creating the tool paths to actually machine the project out of your stock. And stock is the material that you start with at the beginning of a project. Let's first take a look at the finished project. This is a small keychain that I have designed with a piece of hardwood stock. You can see it has a nice border with some texture and an engraved name here in the middle. The specifics of this design are up to you, so feel free to use your imagination on the actual shape of the animal keychain as well as the name that is engraved. If you'd like to follow along step by step, there will be files listed in the description of this video to help you do so. The first thing we need to do is fire up Carbide Create. You can download it from the link in the description. Once launched, it is a good idea to save our file. Click File, then Save. I'm going to name this project Keychain. Next, you'll set up your stock. In this tutorial, I'll be using metric units, but feel free to use the units you are most comfortable with. Click the Setup icon and choose the preferred units first at the bottom. Use 70 millimeters or 2.75 inches for the X and 40 millimeters or 1.57 inches for the Y. For the stock height, we will use 6.35 millimeters or 0.25 inches. This is a quarter inch piece of stock that is pretty common to find. For every project, you'll wanna make sure that these are the exact measurements of your material or stock before beginning your design in Carbide Create. Finally, select OK. Next, select the Grid Options icon and uncheck Show Grid. And now select the Set Background Image button. Select the Load Image button and find a profile of your pet or an animal that is simple in shape as you will be tracing the outline of it for this project. I'll use this nice cat silhouette image. As you can see, when I first import it, it is much too large for use on my small canvas. For me, I'll scale this image down to 5% or 0.05 scale. Carbide Create has an easy to use scale feature, which will maintain the relative dimensions of an image as you alter the size of the image to fit your project. Once you establish the correct scale for your image, click and drag to position your animal and select Done. Now is a great time to save your project. There are a few different ways you can use this background image to create a vector path that will eventually turn into your finished part. The first way we will examine is using design tools to get a rough shape of the animal and then use a Boolean union to join these shapes and then finally tweak them to match the background image. This technique is useful when you do not have a clear edge to your reference photo. Like you can see here, say if you're using a real picture of your animal. To start, zoom into the head of the cat using the scroll wheel and right click the mouse to pan into position. Select the circle tool and left click the center of the head of your animal. Move the mouse outward until the edge of the circle starts to match the shape of the animal's head and then left click again. 
Now, select the Polyline tool and start on the edge of the circle and roughly outline the shape of the animal's ears and mouth. When finished, select the Done button. Select the Join Vectors button to close your shape, and then click and drag to select all of the vector paths you have created. You'll see a few buttons appear above the Transform tab called Boolean. These buttons will allow you to combine two or more vector paths in different ways. Today, you will select the Boolean union and see that your shapes have just combined and left only the outline as the remaining vector path. These tools are extremely useful and powerful in their functions. It's now time to tweak your vector path nodes to perfectly line up with your new union vector path in the reference image. To do this, select the vector path and select the node edit button. Here you will be able to click and drag nodes to place on your reference picture. You can select multiple nodes at a time with click and drag and then move the selected nodes by dragging them into place. You can also smooth a node by selecting that node and hitting the S key. This will create two handles on either side of the node to curve your path as you see fit. Finally, you can delete selected nodes by pressing the D key. Spend some time getting comfortable with node editing. This is how you can edit and tweak your designs even after your toolpaths are generated. This will go a long way to making smooth vectors and thereby smooth cuts. The machine will follow every last vector line and node you put into a drawing. Now let's look at a second way to accomplish this outline of your animal. Select your vector path and hit delete. Don't worry, this new approach will bring your animal right back. Select the set background button and uncheck the show icon and then press done. Carbide Create has a feature in the import tab called image trace. We'll give you a quick example of this powerful feature. It's capable of creating a vector path from a well-defined image, such as a silhouette like this one. To do this, select the Image Trace button. Select the same image of your animal and click Trace Image and OK. You'll now see that the image has been converted perfectly into a vector path that matches the image. Pretty cool, huh? Feel free to explore the settings of the trace feature. We'll cover those in depth in another video. All we need to do now is scale the animal path down. Select the path and click the Scale button from the Transform tab. Use the handles to shrink the path down to your desired size and then move it into place on your stock. Make sure the path has just a bit of clearance around your stock. Now that you have your image perfectly outlined, it's time to add text, a keyring hole, and a border to the keychain. We can start with the text. Select the text tool and type the name of your animal in the upper left box. Click apply to see those changes reflected in the text path. Don't worry about sizing the text for now. Just experiment with fonts and find one you like. The simpler, the better for this project. Once you have found a font that you liked, when finished, hit the done button. Next, use the scale tool to scale and position your text inside the keychain. To create a keychain hole, use the circle tool to create a small hole above the animal name. The circle should have a radius of at least 1.5 millimeters or 0.06 inches. The final step in this video is to create a small border around your keychain. Select the animal vector path and then select the offset vectors button in the transform tab. Change the option to outside and finally input 1.5 millimeters or 0.06 inches. Congratulations, you've just created your keychain design. Please save your file and come back for part two where we will turn these vector paths into tool paths for your CNC to carve your keychain. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.